Collecting for the county orphanage? Sir? Merry Christmas, sir. Ma'am, collecting for the county orphanage? Thank you very much, ma'am. Merry Christmas to you. Ma'am, collecting for the county orphanage? I don't have any change. But will this do? That's fine. Thank you, ma'am. Merry Christmas to you. In almost two weeks. Yes, yes, I know. I, I promised to speak to him, and I will. No, I will. But the moment has to be right, or... If he even knew I was talking with you now, I'm going to be late. Mr. Thatcher, it means life or death to us. I know. for the county orphanage. Very. Thank you very much, sir. Westward leading still. Sir, back for the county orphanage. Here you are. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Thank Merry you very Christmas. much, sir. Merry Christmas to you, too, sir. Mr. Slade wouldn't be in by any chance, would he? Well, um, Mr. Slade is very busy. That time of year, payments due, accounts receivable. But if... If you sent him a letter, I, I'm sure he'd... Ridiculous, Thatcher. Of course I want to see the orphanage kids. Let them in. Wonderful children. Just wonderful. I see you've been practicing. Yes, sir. On that new piano, sir, it sure is a beauty. We won't talk about the piano right now, will we? On the other hand, I'm sure that a holiday gift would not be objected to. <laughs> yes, right. I had these printed at my own expense. One for you, and one for you. You're going to learn how the great men of this country, self-made men, did it all on their own. Morgan, Coolidge, Zebulon Pike, climbed that mountain hand over hand, never asked for anything. Thrift, hard work, pay your bills on time, maybe you'll have a mountain of your own someday. Remember, don't rest on your laurels, it breeds decay. Don't dawdle. Bye-bye, thanks for coming. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you very much, sir. Oh, it's a pleasure. I like to help young people. Bye-bye. Hey, come on. Mr. Slade thinks he's really doing us a favor, you know? I mean, he really believes it. So, let's all show our appreciation for him, huh? I believe we have some visits to make. Yes, sir. You have the papers ready? Yes, sir. They're all here. Here, sir. A truck full of gas. Joe checked everything out. extension, Mr. Slade. Just a couple of months. I think we can make the payments. You think you could? Don't oh. beg him, Jenny. He has come to do what the law allows. Nothing we can say or stop him. Thatcher. Sir? Uh, Repossession order. Merrimack County Court.
you, gentlemen. Give this to Mr. Jessup. He'll understand. Yes, sir. Memories, Mr. Slade? Well, it would be only natural. Well, place hasn't changed much since you were a boy. May I remind you, sir, that I lived here for a year. I, I bet you remember a lot during that year. under a year. Ball games at Webster Park, chestnuts at holiday meals, and caroling on yes, the streets Yes, I know. They Christmas. came to my office this morning. Now, can we get down to business? Business? Yes. I'm afraid our situation hasn't changed very much. Well, I'm very sorry to hear that, Jessup. You shouldn't have gotten in over your head. But we needed a piano. After 42 years, the old one fell apart. We had no choice. Neither do I. Such. Such. Repossession order. Merrimack County Court. Chaucer mixed in with Plato and Socrates. Can you imagine that? When did you change your stock? Change it? I advanced your $5,000 for university shop. To me, that means sweaters, bow ties, ukuleles. To me, it means wisdom, Mr. Slade. With all your wisdom, have you found a way to pay your debt? Well, not all of it, but you can take all the money I have. And I will. Plus, your stock for liquidation. A scrap paper, penny a pound, huh? Better than nothing. Thatcher. Oh. Attachment order, Merrimack County Court. Is this genuine leather? It's Morocco. Yeah, it feels good. Oh, don't be do a that. few dollars in this after all. Take everything that's leather, we'll rip them apart at the warehouse. Yeah. Oh, not that one, sir. Please, above all, not that one. Why not? Well, it's an original edition of Mr. Charles Dickens. It was given me by my father, who got it from his grandfather, who was a friend of Mr. Dickens. It must be protected. Oh, Mr. Merrivale, you don't need books. You make up wonderful stories by yourself. Don't forget the rest in here. Wonderful piece of goods. Bring it over here. 
Joe, make sure the garage is double locked before you go home. Yes, sir. Merry Christmas, Joe. Mr. Thatcher, I need a little assistance with the bindings here. Don't just stand there. Are you having some difficulty with your hearing? It's Christmas, sir. Perhaps... Can we talk a moment, Mr. Slade? What on earth for? Well, it's about the town, sir. It's about the times that we're going through. I know all about the times we're going through, so get to the point. Well, uh, when there were... When there was uh, money to sp When the quarry was being worked... Well, that couldn't possibly be the point. The quarry has been closed for a year. Ah, uh, no, that's just the point, sir. Now, the men who work there, now, they've had a wonderful idea, and they've asked me to be the spokesman. So what? Well, well, Mr. Slade, since you own so much of the town, if anybody could open up the quarry again, it'll be you. Well, a man of your means... Why would I want to open a, a business that's failed? Because there's hope for the future in it, sir. Well, in the things that Mr. Roosevelt is doing, new roads, new dams, new public buildings, there's sure to be a need for granite again. Well, if you think that's true, Thatcher, then why don't you open it yourself? You should at least hear me, sir. These men have nothing left. Rebellion? Oh, no, no. If the quarry were opened up again, sir, Everyone would benefit. There'd be more business in the town. There'd, there'd be more money to spend. I mean, it would be prosperous for you, Mr. Slade. Your debtors could pay you on time, and then you wouldn't have... No, go on and say it. I wouldn't have to what? Put a gun to their heads, take their Victrolas and their lovely couches and leave them in empty houses? Oh, you really do hate me, don't you, Thatcher? No, sir. Yes, sir. I see it in those eyes every time we go out in the truck, making me out to be some kind of monster for taking what's rightfully mine. Let me tell you something, Thatcher. A man who is as soft as an old shoe is generally of little worth. Always taking the debtor's side. You hold on to those repossession papers like they were stuck to your fingers. And now you're trying to teach me business? Sir, I only... You only conspire with a gang of quarry rats to take some money out of me. I don't need to learn business from you. I learned it from the best. Jack Latham, the smartest businessman this state ever knew. Until now. Do you know what he said to me on his deathbed? He said, Ben, never throw good money after bad. And never pay a man one penny more than he's worth. So you go back and you tell your quarry workers that their ranks of the unemployed have just been increased by one. Oh, no, sir, I didn't mean... I don't want to see your face anymore, Thatcher. Get out. Just get my things. Yes, you do that. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Oh, hi, honey. Mm. Oh, I'm glad you're home. You okay? Yep. Christmas tree all decorated. Mm-hmm. 
Well, 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 look at this activity now. But where's my Mr. T? Here's my Sarah. Who turned off the lights? Now, who would this be underneath my coat? Who is underneath my coat? It's Jonathan Thatcher! Hey! How have you been today? Fine. Why'd you bring these things home from the office? Would you excuse me a moment? I'm going to talk to your mother. Rendition of Angels We Have Heard on High. Now, as a special Christmas Eve presentation, please. I would like to read you a portion of the now famous letter that appeared in the editorial pages of the New York Sun in 1890. We need to talk. Darkness is cheap, and he liked it. But before he shut the heavy door, he walked through the rooms to see that all was all right. Sitting room, bedroom, lumber room, all as they should be. <laughs> then there was a clanking noise deep down below, as if some person were dragging a heavy chain over the casks in the cellar. He remembered that ghosts in haunted houses were described as dragging chains. Claptrap. This is an emergency. I'm Benedict Slade, 429 Front Street. I seem to have lost all of my power in my warehouse. Operator? Operator?
All right. All right, come out this minute. I know someone's here. I've got a gun. Oh, come on, Ben. You wouldn't shoot your old partner, would you? Who are you? You know damn well who I am. I know who you want me to think you are. You're on the right track. He's dead. Right again? Now, there's some trick being played here. And I know what it is. Shrewd as ever, eh, Ben? Makeup. It took six pounds of powder and paint to make that actor look like Frankenstein. That's what they said in the paper. And that's what you used, makeup, to make yourself look like Latham, Mr. Whoever you are. Then if I'm not Latham, I wouldn't know things only you and Latham knew? Like what? Like telling the Reverend Williams his antique deacon's bench was only a cheap reproduction so you could snatch it up as collateral and make a profit. Shall I go on? Jack? Jack. But you're... Dead. Don't be afraid to say it. It's only a state of mind. That is, two states. I'm in the larger one. Hello? But you don't look... Uh... Hell's not what you think it is. Fire, sulfur, devils with pitchforks, none of that. Thank God. It's worse. It's living in all your past, all the time. Forever. There's a politician who sits in a room with all his speeches blaring at the same time. No earplugs, either. And a king who has to keep staring at the faces of many sent to war. But you're a businessman, a very good one. You drive a hard bargain, but you've never done anything evil. Evil's not just what you do. It's what you don't do. Each day, each man has a thousand chances. But they're missed forever once they put you in the ground. But you, you can still make changes, Ben. And I'm going to help you. Don't go out of your way for me there, Jack. You're going to get three more visitations. Ghosts? Oh, that storybook, Doc. I think of them as conductors on the Boston main line. You better go where they take you. Look for them, Ben. Look for them. Jack. Jack. Don't leave me now, Jack. I've got a million questions to ask you. Jack. Where are you? Must have been the cheese. It must have gone off when I didn't realize it. It's just a slight touch of indigestion, that's all. <laughs> it's too quiet in here, that's the problem. Ladies and gentlemen, as reported earlier, the stock market has taken a severe plunge, and investors Again? seem convinced that the market is headed for certain disaster. We are standing by for a statement from President Hoover. He will speak to the well, nation on the president. state of the American economy. Roosevelt. Our microphones are set up in the Oval Office of the White House, where Mr. Hoover is about to begin his address. Sources close to the White House say that Mr. Hoover will about. attempt to convince the American people... 
He's climbing out of the cockpit now. He throws back his goggles and jumps to the ground. Listen to that crowd. And who can blame them on this glorious day of 1927 when Charles A. Lindbergh has become the first man to fly the Atlantic Ocean? I said it was six years ago. I've waited for hours to greet the famous leader with the warmest welcome afforded an American citizen. Nice instrument. I played a trumpet in a war a long time ago. You should have seen those walls come down. How'd you get in here? You make it sound as if I'd been away. The past is always nearby, especially here. I suppose you're going to tell me now that you are the, the spirit of Christmas past? You said it, not I. It's not going to work, you know. I know who you are, so why don't you just go back to your little silly bookstore, Maryville? Not much of a bookstore anymore. I said get out. Outside. All right. Outside. What are you doing? What's going on here? Had enough? Yes, I've had enough. Thank you very much. Get me back inside. Sorry to be so dramatic, but you did bring it on yourself. Jack said visitation's not freezing to death. What is it you want? The past wants only to be remembered. I remember the past very well without your help. Thank you. Do you remember it, really? Or just those parts you pick out for yourself? Do you know this place? I know this place. The county orphanage. I guess we've come to a costume party. Guess again. Well, people haven't dressed like this for 40 years. You're getting warmer. They're coming, they're coming. Boys, get ready, everyone get ready. Ah, here comes Mrs. Tidings. She runs the place. No, nope, it's impossible. She's dead. She wasn't when you were here. They're the best of the lot, Mr. Brewster. Well behaved, intelligent, deserving. That's excellent, Mrs. Tidings, excellent. Of course, uh, whoever we choose for our apprentice will have to be able to learn the business from the ground up. Oh, I'm sure every one of these boys would be more than satisfactory. Who's that at the back of the room? Oh, that's Benedict Slade. Where? He hasn't been here very long. When his parents died, he was passed around among aunts and uncles. Then they turned him over to us. So skinny. Why didn't you feed me better? How is he with his hands? He fights a lot. Has he ever used tools? No. Oh, more from anger than skill. Well, at least that's a beginning. Oh, Mr. Brewster, I don't think you'd be advised to take that boy. Excuse me, Mrs. Tidings. I'd much rather do something for someone who needs rather than someone who just wants. Please bring him over to us, would you? Thank you. Ah! Looks like Mrs. Tidings convinced you. Yes, yes, she always... Thank you, Roy. Down 
you get, lad. Don't keep him here too long, Nathaniel. Remember, dinner is 5 o'clock sharp. We'll be there. Come on, boy. Now, your job will be to look after pieces of machinery like that, and keep them clean, keep them oiled. Of course, you'd have to uh, dust off all the furniture back there in the showroom, too. And let's see what else. Well, sweep up at the end of the day. You can see how much we need that. The most important thing, every minute you get, you watch the craftsmen. See what it is they do and how they do it. Before you know it, you might have a bench of your own. Do you think you'd like that? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? You imbecile. Anybody can see this is a thriving business. I'm trying to offer you an opportunity, young man. Well, you can give it to someone else. That must have been very rough on you, Ben. Very painful for you, losing your parents like that. And then being shifted around from relative to relative. Every time you start feeling close to someone, they move you on, huh? I guess after a while, it just seems better not to get too close to anyone. And it doesn't hurt so badly when you have to leave. How could he look inside me like that? How do you know how I felt? If you want to be my apprentice, you can move right in with my family and you'll never have to move until you want to. I want to leave now. It's up to you. Do you know why that is? Sure I do. It's a stick. A stick? Is that all you see here? Is it? Oh, you're not as bright as I thought you were. This is anything that I wanted to be. That could be a, a magician's wand for doing tricks. Or it uh, could be the handle of a whip for taming wild lions. I could make that into the spoke of a ship's wheel that can lead you to all kinds of new lands and new adventures. I could even carve that into a flute. And then I could play it to charm all those folks in old Hamlin Town. Here. That can be anything you want it to be. Unless, of course, you're too dumb to see anything but a stick there. she was. There's quite a lot you've forgotten. Instead of three, we can reduce production by a day. You haven't heard one thing I've said. Sure I have. I've been listening. Have you? Yeah. Then you know how I was talking about the park, nature. Do you like nature, Ben? Yeah. Would you like to get really close to it? I mean really close. Would you? Yeah. Good! <laughs> oh, ow! Oh, you're going to pay for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
What did your father say? Oh, I thought you weren't listening. You see, don't underestimate me, Helen. <laughs> well, I told him. No finishing school for me. No anything that would take me away from... from Concord. Yeah? Yeah. I'm sure after all that that you really want to get your breath back, so we're going to give out some gifts. Oh, oh. Sam, Sam Perkins. Sam, Sam Perkins. Hey. There's a message, Sam. <laughs> what every foreman needs at home. <laughs> oh. uh, Essie, where is Essie? Ah, thank you. Thank you, Miss Brewster. Thank you very much. What in the world have we here? To the Brewster family and all their employees, the future. <laughs> Let's find out. <laughs> I guess we'll cut in and hope for the best. Huh? <laughs> well, I hope I'm not damaging whatever it is. <laughs> Stapleton Furniture Company, Grand Rapids, Michigan. <laughs> I guess the joke's on me. <laughs> That's not a joke, Mr. Brewster. Oh, did you bring this, Ben? Yes, sir, I did. What? <laughs> I, believe, I believe that chair is the future, and I think it can help us all if we're smart enough to use it. Oh, no. Oh, right. Oh, right. How? That chair is not made the same way that we make ours. It's made on the assembly line. Oh, that's right, that's right. They're starting to use the assembly line now in furniture. Some fellow puts on one part, another fellow puts on another. They're all made by machinery. They can no. sell that no. chair oh, for one half the price of one that we put out. Hey, yeah, but look how it's made. Nails instead of pegs. Bad fittings, all sloshed with glue to keep them together. You call that a chair like ours? <laughs> there are millions of people who won't know the difference. They'll... Yes, they will. Excuse me. They'll just look at the price tag, and that's the one that they'll buy. Oh, I, I can't accept that, Ben. No. no, when the day of quality ends in this country, we'll all be in great trouble indeed. Here, here. here. What did you get in your, your gift there? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My boy, old Robert. Your boy, so will your wife. <laughs> oh, and as ever, here, Sam, a bonus check. Ben, Ben, that wasn't very polite. Go inside, Helen, it's raining. So they disagreed with you. Is that such a terrible thing? You think I'm angry because he disagreed with me? That's not what? it, Helen. That's not it at all. I'm sorry for your father. I feel sorry for everyone that works for him. They're going to be passed by, and that's what I don't want to happen. Ben, then come to dinner tonight and explain yeah, it to him here. again. Do it for me, Ben, please. <laughs> did, did you get a look at Sam Perkins' face when he lifted out those boxing? <laughs> Oh, that he poor almost man. swallowed his cigar. Mr. Brewster? <laughs> yes, sir. I know that bringing in that chair this afternoon was a smart aleck act. And I deeply apologize. Oh, Ben, that's all right. I know you meant well. 
I still do, sir. Whether you like it or not, mass production is coming in. In order to survive, you've got to start thinking about it. Well, I never will, Ben. I never could. I guess I'm uh, too old and too stubborn to change. I have something to say to you. All of you. The day you came into the orphanage, you saved my life, and I will never, ever forget that. Even when I leave here. Are you going somewhere? Oh, well, say it, Ben. Whatever it is, just get it out. Ed Stapleton, the man that sent the chair, offered me a job with his company in the sales division. It's not a very big job. I know that I can work myself up. I think we need some more sweet potatoes. Helen. I don't think you understand. I hate you right now, talking to me about babies and rings and all the time knowing you were going. I didn't know until tonight. Well, you must have been thinking about it. Why didn't you say something to me? Because I was me? hoping I was going to change my mind. I didn't want to hurt you. I love you very much. Then take me with you. I can't. Why not? Because I'm starting low out there. I'm at the bottom rung of the ladder. And I don't even have to get enough to get myself by. Do you think that matters to me? I don't mind sacrificing. I know I mind that you sacrifice. I'll, I'll call you as soon as I'm ready, I promise. When? 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 When we can live the way I want to live, with nice clothes and a nice car and a nice house. When we walk down the street, Helen, they're going to say, there go the Slades. It's going to mean something. We're going to be somebody. I want to be somebody. Success. I guess that means just about everything to you. Are you rested now? I will be after a good night's sleep. But to tell you the truth, I'm not sure I'm not sleeping now. Now, what does that make me? The word that comes to mind? Nightmare. You'll forgive me if I don't say thank you very much when you leave. Leave? You really are something. Did you think our trip was over, that I'd let you off so easily? A lifetime, Mr. Slade. A million moments of giving, taking, fighting, losing. Each moment a decision, each decision affecting others, each to be accounted for. Each. We keep very careful inventory. As you do. up until 9 o'clock this evening. It's, uh, it's $24,150. Yeah.
rooms will be open till midnight, so let's try and reach our goal of $25,000. Miss Brewster. Miss Brewster, I have in my hand $850. You've reached $25,000. certainly return the compliment. Oh, the money, Cliff. Thank you. Come over here and I'll make it up. You know, it's amazing. I thought about everything that I was going to say to you when I first saw you. And all I can come up with is Tandy. My dog? You wrote that he was in a terrible accident. Did he recover? Oh, yes, perfectly. That was four years ago, Ben. I really am sorry. No need to be. I'm not even sure who stopped writing first. Ben. Very nice to see you. Mr. Brewster. Well, you're certainly looking yet older, I, I know, but no wiser. I've had two heart attacks, and I still haven't the sense to quit. They were mild and generous. All right. You know, there's a way of taking it easy and still staying in business. Oh, we're easing up, all right, Ben. The men are going off to war, and their families are spending their money on, on bombs. There's not that much left over for furniture. It doesn't matter nowadays. There's a brand new way of selling. It even works on people who don't have the price. <laughs> What's it called? St. Patrick's Miracle? Time payment. Time payment? That's very interesting. It's nice to see you. You happy, Ben? Oh, success is a wonderful feeling. People can smell it. They sense it. Especially when you're on the move. On the rise. That's why I'm leaving the Stapleton firm. I thought you were doing so well there. I was. Until I ran smack into the uh, Stapleton nephews. They were saying, you know, you don't move any further unless you're related. <laughs> so I'll find another mountain to climb. Here? In Concord? It's very possible. love to see you home. All right. Mr. Slade. Jack Lathe, investments in real estate. How do you do, sir? I was interested in what you were saying before about that uh, new way of selling. Could we talk sometime? I look forward to the opportunity. I was told that you'd be here at this party. Come see me just after Christmas. I'll check my calendar. Thank you. Yep, that's me. I always moved in when the moment was good. I could always smell a good business deal. So could Latham. Look where he ended up. There it is. Sometimes I find myself daydreaming about... Ben, there's something I want to say to you. You keep saying how nothing's changed and everything's the same. Well, well, we're not the same. We have changed. And if... if you stay, we're gonna have to get to know each other all over again. I totally agree with you. And as a matter of fact, 
fact, I think we could start right now. <laughs> What's that? A lathe. It is. But nobody's supposed to be in there. All right. All right, you stay right here. I'll be right back. I'm going with you. Helen, please. I'm going with you, Ben. See, everything is still the same. Good evening, Sam. Must be ten years at least. Now he scared me to death. <laughs> You're not the only one. What are you doing so late here on a Christmas Eve? Yeah, he's catching up on a bit of work. Does my father know you're here? No, oh, he'd never allow it. But it has to be done now that half our people are gone. I appreciate what you're doing, Sam, but I want you to stop right now and go home to your family. Yes, and I agree. Just 15 minutes more. I promise. You're too good to us, Sam. Do you need a hand? For a couple of table legs? Get out of here. <laughs> Very good to see you. Good night, Sam. Bye, Ben. Bye, Helen. Merry Christmas, Sam. Figures written up for you as soon as possible, then, Jack. Oh, there's no hurry. Well, there is for me. Ben. I'm very sorry to hear what happened. Oh. Well, I'm such a smart businessman, Ben, that I went and let the insurance policy lapse. <laughs> Can you believe that? Well, we'll, uh, we'll get the old place rebuilt again someday with luck and help of good friends. Take care of yourself, oh, you? Always, always. Come on in. Nice to see you. May I help you? Thanks. Are you all right? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I'm fine. Time payment, you called it? That or the installment plan. Customer makes a down payment of maybe 10%. Goes home with the product. Pays it off a little each month, plus interest, for about a year or two. By the time he's finished, you've got 150% of the purchase price. What happens if he can't make the payments? If he's working, you attach a salary. If not, repossess it, take it back, sell it again. It's not unheard of that you can get 200% of the list price. I like it. Well, that don't mean I'm going to invest. A scheme like that takes a lot of capital. And everyone knows that you are the most powerful money man in these parts, sir. <laughs> now, that's just the trouble. My money's spread all over the place. Everyone making demands. Take old man Brewster. Banks turned him down, so he came to me. Wants 100000 to rebuild his shop, maybe more later. 
can't do that and finance your scheme, too. If I might make a point, sir. Mr. Brewster is a wonderful man, and I owe him a lot. But he's been doing the same thing for 40 years. He won't even look at a new idea. And I sincerely believe that he wasn't doing that well before his loss. Told me he was climbing back. Not to overstep my bounds, but if it were my money to invest, and I had the choice between a rigid old and the innovative new, there would be no contest. I didn't make that decision, Latham did. I wouldn't hurt your father for all the money in the world. If I'm lying, if I am lying, then let my eternal soul be damned. Mr. Slade, come in. Oh, you better put that down. You break it, you'll hear from me. Get off there. Get off there. You're wasting your time, Jessup. This isn't going to work. Christmas has worked for 2,000 years. It's working now. I suppose you're going to tell me that you're some great spirit of the Christmas present. You do have an interesting way of putting things. Yes, well, then you put it right out of your mind. Because you, I don't know how you got in here, but you're not going to, you're not going to leave with my piano, repossessed by court order. It belongs to me. Then you're entitled to the music you like best. Do you have any favorite selections? Yes, I do. My privacy, which I shall enforce by calling the police. I'm going to close my eyes for 15 seconds, and when I open them, you, you best be.
You can't block out the Christmas spirit. It's everywhere. What do you want from me? Only to share this beautiful holiday with you. As someone else might have done. Someone else? Should look familiar, Mr. Slade, like mother, like daughter, they say. That's Helen's child. We're in Helen's house? You never kept track of her, did you? She married a pharmacist. Very happy, too, as you can see for yourself. This lady, it's a private moment for them. found on dry river beds and on trails long overgrown by weeds. What's more important are the paths we follow now. I know this place. I've never been here before. Why does it look so familiar? The picture, maybe. On my office wall, my employee over his desk. Your former employee, remember? He deserved to be fired. Disagrees with everything I do inspires with others to pull money out of me. Who needs someone like that around? There are three in here who do. Mom, Dad, please tell us what's wrong. Nothing's wrong, dear. And I don't want us to feel bad. We're just destroying the guests. We make up all kinds of things. My goodness, can't your father and I have a secret without the world coming to an end? Radio station WBZ in Boston. We continue now our concert of marches for this I lost my job today. Is that all? We thought it was something worse. That you killed somebody with an axe and we're going to be hung. There's someone I'd like to kill with an axe. Now you don't mean that, Doris. You'll, you'll get another job, won't you, Daddy? Yes, I will. Of course. Eventually. As a matter of fact, I happen to be considering one at the very moment. What is it? I have been offered the job of exalted Grand Master of the Barnman Bailey Circus. My only problem is, do I take it? Yes! Yes! My very sentiments, exactly! Ladies and gentlemen, the Barnum and Bailey Circus presents the Flying Adventures! Hey, sir, I bet I can beat you in Chinese checkers.
The boy, was he in an accident? If it were only that. I suppose the trip for Jonathan's out of the question now. Australia and $128? Supposing we sold the house and the furniture and everything. There's no market for houses. The furniture gets as far as Columbus, Ohio. Does it have to be Australia? Maybe there's some other place that... You heard the doctor. Only one clinic offers any real hope, Sister Kenny's. Her new way of stimulating the muscles gets them going again so the children like John... ...can lead out their normal. Then Australia it'll be. You'll find... <coughs> Jonathan, are, are you all right? I'm okay. He gets out of breath so easily. You'll find some work. Maybe in Boston. And so will I. If we work night and day, he'll have that trip. something I must know. Watch that. Their little boy. Does he live or die? Is that important to you? Yes, it's important. The future's a tricky place full of shadows shifting and changing as present realities do. Do you see these shadows? As well as most and better than some. And what do they say to you? Next Christmas, I see a pair of crutches in the corner carefully preserved at this table, family. Mother, father, little girl. Between them, there's an empty chair. the dread disease of polio, once known as infantile paralysis. Congratulatory messages have flooded in from around the... You never replace the Victrola, that's for sure. And who will replace you, Mr. Slade? Hold your ground. Hold your ground. You can have the radio back. It's okay. Take it back to the farm free of charge. Do I look like a farmer to you? Modern. Modern? Mo more than modern. More than modern. Uh, future. F You're the, the spirit of Christmas future? You know, I, uh, I don't think you really believe it. I do. I do. Indeed, I do. Well, you'd better, Mr. Slade. Yes, I do. The future is coming, whether you like it or not. The distant future. And a future much closer to you. Where are you going? Items 27A and B. Bronze bookends. Just feel the weight of those. They're beauties. What am I bid? Who's going to give me $2 to start? 15 cents. 15 cents. I got 15 cents here. 25. 15, 25, 25, 25 is a bid. 
I beg your pardon, who are all of these people and what are you doing on my property? It's all quite legal, I assure you. A dollar once, a dollar twice. Beyond a dollar, sold for a dollar. <laughs> You're selling them very cheap. Those bookends are worth $3.95. Well, oh, he's got to get rid of everything. Sheriff's orders. Oh, there's a nice bed made of pure mahogany with a box spring and a mattress, two suits of clothes size 40, five shirts, six ties, three pairs of shoes, a tie clasp, cufflinks, and a money clip. And what a money clip. What am I bid for the lot? Are they crazy? This is quality merchandise. Very much like my own possessions. I bid $500, not a penny less. Uh, he can't hear you. $1,000 worth every bit. No bids? Uh, bid 10 cents for the lot. <laughs> <laughs> bid high, isn't it? <laughs> I find this very distasteful. It gets no better, Mr. Slade. person is. You can't guess. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention please. I've saved one final item for this moment. What am I bid for this? Fifty dollars. I have fifty dollars once. Any advance? Fifty dollars. Seventy-five. Seventy-five. That's the way to go. That's up to seventy-five dollars now. We have an eighty-five dollar bid for the lady. One hundred. One hundred dollars is bid. Now these prices are beginning to make sense. Hundred dollars once. Hundred dollars twice. Any more? Sold for hundred dollars. when I'm heading home that I still expect to find him waiting behind the doorway. And then I remember that he's here. My little Mr. T. Hard to believe that a year's gone by since he left us. That boy. That shouldn't surprise you. Life is cause and effect. And you were certainly no stranger to the cause. That hasn't happened yet. That is not real. The grief of those people is real. Do you can't blame me for something I didn't know. Thatcher, tell her. Tell her I didn't know you had a sick child. You never said a word. We know there's going to be other partings among us. A marriage. Long voyages. Even death again. But when someone is remembered with love, their spirit never really dies. So instead of looking for someone to blame, let's make a promise to each other. That no matter where we find ourselves in years to come, together or apart, 
we will always remember little Jonathan. I you promise. If I had known, things could have been different. Perhaps the possibility exists that it could be different. Is that possible? That's not for me to say. But we'd better go now. Something about this place. Something that draws me right to it. The monument looks fairly new and yet neglected. And no one visits that grave. Not ever? Not ever. To lie in a, in a grave, unloved and unremembered. It's as if the life was never lived. That is the only real death. Who is the unfortunate person? Take a look. Tell me that this can change. I don't want to lie here in, an, in a grave, unremembered and unloved forever. Please tell me it could change. I'm willing to make a change. It's time to go, Mr. Slade. You've seen the future. I'm willing to make a change. I want it to happen differently. so funny about that. Just answer the question. Don't you know it's Christmas? It's Christmas. It's Christmas. There's still time. Christmas to you, sir. What are you doing here? I'm working, of course. What are you doing? You're taking the whole day off, regardless of all the work that has to be done? But I'm not your employee anymore, sir. Don't you tell me who you are. 
I know more about you than you could possibly dream. Now go out to the truck and get what I've got for you. Come on. Come on. You and I have a very important business discussion. What business? What's on the menu for today's dinner? Chicken, carrots, vegetables. How big's your chicken? Five pounds. Five Why pounds, you... you call that a holiday chicken? <laughs> now you try this, put this in the oven if it fits, if it doesn't, cook it twice. Thank you. These are called Christmas gifts, and to find out... For us? Is it all right if I finish first? Thank you. And to find out who they're for, you just look for the name on top of the box. For Daddy. Yes. For Mommy. For Mommy and Daddy. For me. Thank you. Nothing here for Jonathan. How could that be? Sorry. Oh. What's this? Could this possibly be here? It's not very large. Not very heavy. I like to ride on a bus. You do? Here's a ticket on a bus to Boston. You like to ride on a train? Here's a ticket from Boston to Chicago, from Chicago to San Francisco, California. Oh. You like to travel on a ship, big boat. You do. <laughs> Here's a ticket for the SS Monterey from San Francisco, California to Sydney, Australia. And in Australia, there's a clinic run by a sister, Elizabeth Kenny, and I have a darn good feeling that she's going to make you feel very good. Of course, there'll be a nurse to go along with him. You just have to get used to an empty place at the table, that's all. When he gets back, the boy will be sitting here in this chair that... Uh, doesn't need crutches anymore. Mr. Slade, I, d I don't know what to... Whoops. Yeah. Oh. All right, that's enough of that. It's enough. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you have a lot of cooking to do. At least four hours for that bird. Four hours. Which gives you plenty of time before dinner. Merry Christmas. Let's go get you out. I assume you expect to be paid for these few extra hours of work, huh, Thatcher? Oh, no, 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 Mr. Slade. You Please should expect more. to be paid. You must start thinking like an executive, Thatcher. Vice president in charge of new projects is nothing to sneeze at. New projects? Yes, I was thinking of opening up the granite quarry down at Pentecost Hills. Bring a few hundred jobs into this town. And that's just the beginning. What's going on? No, Mr. Reeves, it's what's coming off. A pot village stove, a rocking chair, and a tabletop radio repossessed by you. Grab something. of that radio. It's acting very peculiar. Mrs. Reeves. Mrs. Reeves. 
a very Merry Christmas. Miles to go. I have the truck. <laughs> now, now, don't be alarmed. There's a few bindings of burrow ripped on top, but that's what they're in business for in the first place. In business? Yes, the Kendall Book Binding Company of Cambridge. I spoke to Mr. Kendall himself. He is sending a man here on Monday. All books to be restored, good as new, guaranteed. <laughs> Especially that book that uh, your father gave grandfather. Uh, never mind, I told him to take especially good care of that one, and I have something for you. A very Merry Christmas, Mr. Merrick. Did you read that book, Mr. Slade? Did I read that book? The uh, Ghosts of Hell, the Spirit of Christmas Past, Present, and Future, Absolute Unadulterated. What was the word he used? Humbug. Mr. Thatcher, please. for our Christmas party. Oh, looks like it turned out that way. <laughs> Thatcher, the other item on the truck, please. Yes, sir. And what do you intend to do on your holiday? Oh, I'm not doing anything that special. Well, you're more than welcome to join us here. That's a very nice invitation. Thank you. That boy over there, who is he? That's Harry. Harry Barnes. We have a problem. In what way? Well, he's been in a number of foster homes. He always manages to have himself kicked out for some outrageous behavior. I used to get into fights. Use his hands a lot. That's right. I used to work with tools. Yes, but always in a hostile way. How did you know that? I understand that, boy. Here we are, sir. Good, good, good. Put them under the tree. Now, Jessup, present, do me a everyone, favor, will you? Present. Tell that young lad I'd like to take him for a drive. Hey, he's been acting lately. He doesn't just... Just keep this for me, please. Come on down. I can persuade him. Now, you listen to me, my fine friend. You've been invited to go for a ride, and I'm bigger than you are. So here are your choices. You can either leave with me smiling, or I'll pull you out of here, kicking and screaming, which will not make a good impression on your friends. You have ten seconds to make a decision. where you come in, Harry. I need an apprentice, someone to oil the machines, make sure they're in working order, sweep up. What do you think about that?
And I'm offering you a present and a future with a promise, Harry. Oh, I promise they will be different. Can we go now? If you can tell me what this is. It's a stick. It's a stick. Well, my friend, you're not as smart as I thought you were. If all you see there is a stick, I could make this into anything I wanted to be. To me, it is a, a baseball bat. It's a, a whip handle. Tame young lions, huh? Spoke of a ship's wheel. Taking me to new, new lands. New treasures. Harry, you can make this into anything you want. Well, maybe you can't because all you see is a stick. Do you have a knife? No. Now you do? What are you going to make? You'll see. Is that a towel bar? Chair leg. Jessup invited me to the home for dinner. How's the food? Pretty bad. <laughs> Always was. You know, when you become my apprentice, uh, you're gonna live with me. Very much like a foster son. Well, give me a chance, boy. Give me a chance. Mm -hmm. 